Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Okay, let's get into it. Um, Jamie Lynn Spears, Britney's sister, has a book coming out. Yes, she has a book coming out. And it's pretty amazing. It, it, it's very interesting. Um, someone sent it to me. It is a nonfiction book about her life. And it's not due till 2022. However, it's Jamie Smith. It's not Jamie Spears, which I think is very strange. And the chapters are, you know, uh, there's a pregnancy chapter. There's, you know, child star. Like, it's it's all about her life. Um, I don't know why she changed the name to Smith. I don't know if this is going to be buried and the book is never going to see the light of day. Obviously, the book was in the works um, because it's our, it's – it's available, and uh, there are some one-star reviews, so some people already know about it and aren't pleased with it, so they're writing one-star reviews because they're not happy that Jamie is writing a book about her life that also is going to feature you know, her opinions and what's going on with her sister, so I don't know how much it's going to change. I don't know if it'll ever see the light and day. Very interesting. Also, there was a great TikTok that came out that showed all the times, maybe not all the times, but more than the one time we saw in the Disney award show where Jamie Lynn performed Britney, her sister's songs. And it looks like it's kind of karaoke nights. It looks like it's small bars. It looks like it's like a full band behind her where she's on all these different occasions singing Britney's songs. So this is something that she really likes to do. And I feel like this isn't the first sibling of a star that's kind of done almost like a tribute band or done their, their sibling songs. Sometimes it's with the blessing of the sibling. Other times it's like, well, if you can't get them, we can get this person. You're like The whole thing is like so interesting. Like I can't imagine if like all of a sudden, you know, my sister was just like starting to do my stand-up act and people were just like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's not Heather. But anyway, um, they so we talked about um on Tuesday's show with Kimberly Archie Archie about um this rumor that was going around that um Ronald Richards, the attorney, the bankruptcy attorney, who's very vocal on Twitter with the housewives, he had put something out there about um that that Erica Jane invested money in Lisa Renna's lipstick cosmetic company and a couple blogs wrote about it that's all been taken down I had sent that info to Kimberly to research and asked is this true and I'm proud that she said I could not find any evidence of it so it appears not to be true or if it is true there, there's no proof of it so I, I guess no it's not true um so I wanted to clear that up that that there's no evidence of that. I, however, have received the Lisa Renna lip stick and kits. It comes with a pencil, a lipstick, and a gloss, and it's very nice, and I like it. And coincidentally, it just got sent to me as that story was coming out. Um, I went to a Juicy movie premiere, which I will talk about on Patreon. I went to go see Randall of Lala and Randall's movie, and it was a really fun night, and it was a really cool experience and a good movie, and I will talk about it on Patreon. Um, as you know, you go to heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon. That's where you get the juiciest stuff. Also, I had a crazy night last night with my very good friend, Maya, and we went to the Waldorf, and then we went to the Beverly Hills Hotel, and then we went to Craig's. And that, those are the kind of things I share on Patreon, okay? So you go to heathermcdonald.net, click on Patreon. Um, okay, I wanted to, oh, also Real Housewives of New York was on last night, and it did get a little, it, there was an entertain, entertaining part. They went, they're still in Salem, longest Salem weekend of my life, um, and, you know, Brishon, the new girl, got in a physical, started to get in a physical fight with Sonia because Sonia was putting her fingers in her face, and then later on, she said, you know, to Ramona, in black culture, when someone puts their face in your personal space or their hands in your face, that means that, you know, someone's about to be hit. So luckily, Leah caught, got in between them, and she was very afraid that they, 
one of them might hit her nose because she just got a nose job. I've never had a nose job. I've certainly wanted one on occasion, but I guess it's so bad if you have a nose job within the first couple years of a nose job and someone touches your nose. Like it, it's so painful and it can fuck it up. Luckily, the producer pounded on the door and got in and broke it up. And then Sonia kind of it didn't mean to, it doesn't seem like, but her purse hit the um, f glass of the fire extinguisher and she broke that. So then they decide they have to have an intervention while they're at a wine bar to tell Sonia that she, in fact, is drinking too much and they don't want her to be arrested like Luann. And, you know, Ramona's like, you know what? I just want to talk to you about, like, I just think, like, the drink, it just doesn't show you in the best light. Like, you know, your drinking is just a little bit too much. And I just, you know, we want to support you. And, I mean, if Sonia stops drinking, I don't know where this show's going to go. Can we not, like, she's, the, like, the one that's, like, consistently, like, pretty fun and entertaining to watch. And she's never mean-spirited to anybody. And um, seems like she has a good heart. And she makes up with Brashawn. Brashawn cries and apologizes. They hug. So now they're good. Ebony is like, was not on Brashawn's side in the fight. She even said, I gave her as many black credit points as I could. And I just cannot, or extra credit points. So she said black extra credit points as I could. And I just can't even like get involved with her. Anyway, they go to a, um, a seance. And Lou didn't get anyone from the other side talking to her, but some weird uncle that she says she doesn't even have an uncle. But... There was some good, like, there were, this seance lady kind of knew what she was doing. She seemed to be talking to Ramona's dead brother that was very troubled that Ramona, I guess, sort of ignored the last couple of years and felt guilty about. So that was kind of interesting. Um, of course, they, you know, Ebony got to talk to her grandmother. And who else talked to some dead people? Anyway, that's about it. But the net, the rest of the part of the season shows, like, lots of supposedly fun things a lot more dick talk a uh, dick uh, cake comes um so that's what you have to look forward to meanwhile real houses of beverly hills their trailer for the second half just dropped and it looks juicy as fuck because it gets um more into who believes erica they're asking about the ponzi uh scheme of tom girardi and she says um if tom stole the money i would like to know where it went and people are having a lot of fun with that line on all the different Instagram accounts that I follow. And it's like, uh, do you think it went to your $40,000 a month glam squad? Um, the other part of all this money, of this $25 million money that has gone through to uh, EJ Global, Erica Jane Global, it's, it's my understanding, which I think this is what does get confusing, and it might even change your mind and you might even make you be a little more sympathetic to Erica or believe her a little bit more than you might right now. I don't think that 25 million was one lump sum. Like, I don't think it was a check for 25 million. I think what they're saying is throughout the years, this much money has gone from the law firm or whatever to Erica Jane. So, um, you know, as these lawsuits start to happen, I think we're going to know more and more about that. And someone also showed a clip of her crying at some party a few seasons ago. I don't know. Eden was there. Remember Eden? It's Eden Sassoon. And she is crying and she is wiping her tears constantly. And then Kyle comes over and tries to wipe it with her fingers and then actually takes part of her um, leopard coat or like shawl and wipes it. So she has been known to wipe tears, Erica Jane, just not when she's trying to convince the world that she didn't know what her husband was doing. Um, so that that's going to that's gonna be really good. I'm obviously going to be watching that. The last thing I want to talk about is this crazy divorce that's going on with this baseball player named Ben Zobrist. And he's a big baseball player, and he's in North Carolina, I guess. That's important because he is suing this pastor that was their pastor – who had an affair with his wife. He is suing him for intentional infliction, in, intentional infliction of emotional abuse and defrauding his charity. So, um, yeah, it's um, basically saying like alienation of affection or by having the affair, then you caused my 
marriage to crumble and therefore I can sue you. And also he had him in charge of his charity and he said that he um, he so, you know, screwed up that job as well. So he's suing the pastor for six million. Of course, he is divorcing his wife, Juliana, and it's just a lot is coming out. All these court documents are from the Chicago Tribune. They, they obtained them. And she, it started with, they, they had a party for the pastor and it was a $30,000 party. And according to these documents, he felt she was getting very chummy with the um, pastor and they were dancing too close and they were on each other. And later on when the party was over, they had an argument about it in which she said, it's not true. Maybe we could reach out to the pastor to give us counseling. And then eventually they became romantically involved. When he found out that his marriage was crumbling, he could no longer, he said, I, I can no longer play. And he had, in 2019, a $12 million deal for the year. But he had to give up a lot of that because he only worked for two months of it. So he got $4.5 million, but the rest, the baseball team was going to keep. Well, now that they're getting divorced, the wife is saying she's entitled to at least $4 million of the $8 million that they did not receive because he was he chose to not finish the season. She's saying that was like deliberate and he should have done it. And she tried to push him to go to the baseball and he didn't want to. His attorney is like, um, no, he was not in the physical or emotional state to play this high, you know, intense sports. He was totally distraught. They're like this Christian couple. They've written all these books together too, um, which will be part of, will be part of this, this trial. Um, they've written some books together. He's written one. She's written one about just how to make a marriage work and be like this awesome Christian couple. And so they're just fighting about the money. But I just thought if I found out that Peter was having an affair with our Catholic priest, um, I it would be pretty hard for me to just go on the road and, you know, do two three shows a night. Oh, by the way, come to my stand-up uh, <laughs> shows this fall. I just added, they just added a couple shows. So there's a second show Saturday in Philly, in Boston, and Seattle. So if you weren't able to get tickets because those other shows are sold out, they've added a second show on Saturday, which is great. It doesn't start too late because the other one starts earlier. You can still do your fun thing, and then really rip it and be with me second show Saturday, sleep in Sunday. You know how it is, peeps. Um, so that's exciting. That's all at HeatherMcDonald.net. Get your tickets. Of course, I'll be in San Francisco at Cobbs August 6th and 7th. And it's really important that you go to HeatherMcDonald.net for your tickets because I cannot believe that I've made it to this point, but some people are scalping my tickets. Yes, I clicked on something, and I ended up at a second site, I guess. And I was like, how are my tickets this much? Well, they weren't. It's because someone was buying them and selling them. So if you don't want to do that, you want to get them directly for the best price, you got to go to heathermcdonald.net and, um, and get those tickets. So now I'm really excited for you guys to hear this interview. I'm going to explain a little bit right when I start to speak to Rachel, you could tell. But as you listen to this, see on the news stuff is coming out we just recorded this a couple days prior saved it for when we could share it it's a very juicy story and more is going to come out and unfold in the next coming weeks which she couldn't share but it's going to be significant based on what you hear today we also then when she kind of shares her juicy scoop i ask her about tiger and we also have, she also shares a lot of interesting, juicy, and funny stories about some of the Real Housewives of New York and their men that she has also dated, which I thought was very hilarious. So here you guys go for a very juicy interview with Rachel. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I'm very excited to have a return guest in person, Rachel, you can tell, and I said it right? Close enough. Jesus Christ. Anyway... We've been texting since you've been on the show, mm -hmm. and you said you're coming to L.A., and you're like, I have something really juicy that's going to happen, and I said, can you please come in, and I'll 
you tell me when I can share it, whatever. What is it? And you're like, I can't tell you. So now, now you're like, okay, I can tell you. <laughs> so I'm literally, I do not have any idea what this juice is that you're about to tell me. Right. So you're in the dark. So go for it. Okay. So we're just going to have a conversation about it because it's so much to get okay, out. Just, yes. Okay. So do you remember when I took that job um, with Seeking.com. Of course. Who doesn't remember that? Okay. <laughs> yes. So for those of you may, that don't remember, um, I took a job as the spokesman for Seeking.com. And why that's a big deal, people don't realize. It's the first time that anyone in online dating has ever been a spokesman for an online dating company. And what people don't realize about that, it is a big deal because online dating is a billion-dollar industry. Mm -hmm. There's two companies that are publicly traded that are worth – one's worth like $47 billion. The other one's worth $10 billion. And what are those? Those are Bumble and Match. Okay. And they have right now, I think, 10 million subscribers. So Bumble is more popular than Tinder. Uh, yeah, I think okay. so. All right. But I'm just curious. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't use either one of them. Okay. But yes, they're yeah. but they're very popular, and Bumble and Match are publicly traded. Got right? it. So my company is private, but there's 22 million subscribers. Wow. So that shows mm -hmm. you how big my company is, even though it's private. So me and being, this is seeking seeking dot com seeking, seeking arrangement. Do, so same it's thing. kind of the seeking arrangements, which was. How, got, how long did this start ago, like this site? I'm not sure how long ago it started, but it's been around for 10 years or so, seven, and like, 10 years. You know, I'm, you know, for a person that's seen it, we know it as kind of the sugar baby, sugar daddy thing. Yeah. You know, like be honest about it. Um, I, I'm not out to marry you, though oftentimes people actually do fall in love and get married because I've had a girl come on my, sh come to meet me on a meet and greet and be like, I'm the one. I'm, I, I was doing seeking and, Here's my big diamond, oh. and we're in love. Oh, wow. So it's like, but it's a, a way of being really honest of like, you know, I want to date wealthier people, and I want a girl that's hot, and we're going to see if we can seek each other out and find an arrangement. Yeah, well, the problem that the site had for many years is that it had a bad rap, right, mm -hmm. for being sugar the daddy, sugar, daddy. Yeah. sugar daddy and sugar baby site. And people had this stigma about it or the taboo that it was younger women, older men, and that it was for money, right? right. And that people were, you know, people got mixed up about whether this was a pay for sex site or, you know, they didn't know what people were doing, but it got a bad name. So, you know, in February, I was hired to come on as their spokesman, and I was really asked to um, destigmatize, really, for lack of a better term, what the site represented. And so I did. And mm -hmm. I was, I signed a contract. It was very um, professional. And um, we went over what I thought they should be about, and they agreed. And what I thought they should be about is really representing themselves as a site that should be transparent and that people should be able to ask for what they want, but that it wasn't about having a pretty woman moment and it wasn't about pay, pay for sex. It was about being able to ask for what you want. And the reason why I believed in the site is because I was on the site and I had found the ability to have um, a relationship that worked, but I wasn't a hooker. And I right. knew people that were on the site that weren't hookers. And if you ask um, you know, a lot of your friends, they're all on the site, but nobody wants to admit that they're on the site. So I thought that was really cool to be able to represent the site and try to make it something that people could talk about at the dinner table and not be embarrassed about it. Because yeah. everyone wants to be on the site, right? But nobody right. wants to talk about it. So anyways, I love the fact that I was going to get paid a lot of money, by the way, yeah. to represent it. And then actually really... Um, Really, I really wanted to tell people about it because okay. I, I really did believe in it. And I do believe in online dating. I think online dating is a great way to meet someone because you get the um, the the option to, like, really meet someone mm -hmm. online. Okay. So that that's the background on that. So I go in to this job opportunity knowing that I'm going to represent them and I'm going to get hit with a lot of press right off the bat right. with people being like, oh my God, what do you mean that you're representing this company? Yeah. This is such a dirty thing, you know? Yeah. So right off the bat, I get a ton of press right. about this, right? So I go on everything from you know, um, you know, all the TV shows to all the, you know, everything from page six to, yeah. you know, whatever. And then 
all the way down to Wendy Williams, yeah. which, you know, I don't know if you heard about that interview. No, but, tell me, because so I, I, I was on I Wen- Wendy a lot. Okay, what happened? So was I was it on, good or bad? No, well, it was bad. I mean, it okay. was good, but bad. I was on Wendy Williams for, I mean, being on Wendy Williams is a big yeah. deal. So she asked me to be on because she wanted to be, go on the site. And yeah. she thought it was a really cool idea. So she asked me to come on and she wanted to sign up for, for a membership. Yeah. But what happened on the interview is for the first maybe, I don't know, eight minutes of the interview, she railed me about my relationship with Tiger. And she just went after me. And I think it was a really – people saw it as a really inappropriate interview. Mm. And they – you know, she just didn't know how to interview me. It was a really awkward interview. And then the second – you know, the end of it was about seeking arrangements and her wanting to get set up on a date right. with an older man. and you know. So how did you recover from that when you kind of felt like attacked and I, I don't know, but, and then well, still I mean, be I like, think, hey girl, yeah. get on the site. Like, <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I think I did a good job. I, yeah. I listened to her. Listen, I've been attacked for 10 years. I know how to yeah. handle myself. So I listened to what she had to say. I knew where she was coming from right. because I know that she's been cheated on. So I had some you know, empathy for her and I sat there and I answered her questions. But listen, inside I was like, you know, wanting to finally be like, Wendy, you know, enough already. You know, let's yeah. move on because it's been 10 years. And, you know, I I, I didn't do anything to hurt you. She really yeah. came at me like I I was the one that her husband cheated on her with. Right. You know, it was a difficult interview. So anyways, the point of what I'm trying to get to is that I went on the line for this company and I um, swung a lot of bats right off the bat for, for this company. And... Um, you know, they gave me no um, manual. They weren't like, here's what you need to talk about. Here's what you our don't brand say. is. Yeah. Here's what you don't say. Here's what you do say. But because I'm really good at this and because I knew what where we were going with their yeah. brand, I just – I just went out there and I I went swinging for them. Yeah. And I think I did a really good job because if you look at all the news I got for them, um, it, you know, the headlines were, you know, Rachel, you could tell, destigmatizes sugar baby dating for Seeking.com. Anyways, long story short, um, you know, two months after um, we are getting into our agreement, um, the Matt Gates stuff comes out. Now explain that cuz I I'm not completely versed on what happened. Okay, there. so Matt Gates is a um Republican from Florida. Right. who um had a a a friend of his who was involved in some sex trafficking. Um and the two of them apparently were um, dating some younger women who... So they were dating girls under 18. And then where does the sex trafficking come in that they were actually saying, hey, I'm going to send you over to my friend's house? Uh, well, they apparently were taking girls over state lines. Oh, okay. And um, the girls were underage. And the FBI got involved. And because they were finding girls online, apparently... And is this guy married, the Matt guy? No, he's okay. engaged. Um, Lucky girl. Um, to a woman with a great name, something like um, Ginger, yeah, something you know, so some great name that sounds like a, a porn star. I love, I love it. Um, we have to look it up. But um, so, uh, anyways, so about around May seventeenth, his friend Jeff Goldberg, I think is his name, um, gets indicted for, um, you know, uh, I think six counts. Wow, um, and under the guise that he's going to help the FBI. Um, and then around May 21st, uh, Matt Gates' girlfriend agrees. The fiance. Um, yeah. No, ex-girlfriend, excuse oh, okay. me, helps, agrees to help the FBI um, testify against Matt Gates. And on the 21st, I get a phone, the 22nd, I get a phone call from seeking arrangement saying that they're, having a huge crisis within their company and their branding, and they are going to have to cease all marketing for their brand. And I'm like, what are you talking about? What kind of crisis are we having? Yeah. And they said, well, the Matt Gates thing is kind of a big deal. And I said, well, it's a big deal in their world, but yeah. what, what are we talking about? What kind of big deal are we having? Yeah. I'm the spokesman. I need to know. And they said, well, it's all over the news. And so I'm Googling, you know, as I'm on the phone with them. 
And there's no stories really out. There was maybe one or two stories right at the beginning, which had yeah. been three or four weeks ago. But there was really no stories linking yeah. our site with theirs. It just had linked online dating. And there's, and they said, well, it's a really huge deal. So, you know, and listen, I'm used to crisis. I know what crisis is. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, this is not a crisis, you know. Um, so... And how was it linked to online dating? He was actually he found had met girls. Matt Matt Gates and Jeff had met girls online, and so okay. um, the news had attributed the girls that they were meeting underage. They met online. Do and, you remember what online site that was? Well, they had attributed at first to Seeking. Oh, com. okay. But then after that, they didn't name the sites. Okay. But the issue is, is what happened is that the feds basically said that the money exchanged was on Apple Pay, was on Cash App, whatever, and they had paid for the girls, um, and they were all underage. So mm. that, there's where your problem is. So um, the issue then became that they terminated my contract without mm. cause. And I said, well, if you're going to terminate my contract, you have to have cause. So unless you're closing down the site, you know, and Sugar Baby and Sugar Daddy is your brand you can't really fire me you know because that's what I'm I'm here to destigmatize so they said let me get back to you so I got a um a termination letter on the 29th of May of May Uh yeah and so I hired an attorney um they gave them seven days to produce my entire full I I signed up for six months of um to work for them Mm -hmm. my attorney gave them seven days to to pay me in full on the sixth day, they called me back and they said, we've made a huge mistake. We'd like to offer you your job back. And I said, I'm not, why would I take my job back? Um, then they called my attorney on the seventh day and they said, um, we're offering, we're not only offering Rachel her job back, she must take her job back and she must sign an NDA and she must sign a new contract. And my lawyer was like, I've never seen this. This is odd. So fast forward the story so this doesn't get too long. Um, they are now, it's been now been six weeks, um, and we have to take them to court because they are forcing me to come back to work, or if I don't, um, you know, we have to go to court with them. So they're su- forcing me to sign an NDA um, and sign a new contract, w- or they're not paying me. Right. So the moral to this story that I'm trying to get to <laughs> is that I could just shut up and sign the NDA and take the pay and not really know what I'm doing as a spokesman. Yeah. Or I can say, no, I'm not going to go back to a company that I clearly see is involved with some major issue that probably has to do with Matt Gates and a sex yeah. trafficking ring and a lot of shady shit that I don't want to go back to and be involved in just to get paid and be quiet. Um, and they you know, they want me to sign away whatever they think I've seen and what I know. Um, and a lot of people would just because they want to get paid. But I've done that before. I am I know what NDAs do. I know how they silence you and what that can do psychologically to you. And, you know, the money at this point doesn't matter to me. And I know that they're up to something. And so the point is, is that, you know, I'd rather go um, to court. And it's real, you know. It's really upsetting when you have a monster of a company that's forcing someone in silence to sign something because they want to cover up bad so behavior. So instead of just paying you what they owe you, mm-hmm. they don't want to do that because then you could still cover tell. a juicy scoop mm-hmm. and tell the story, right? So they're like, "Oh, we really want you to work for us," you right? Know? That's um, the guy with of this, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so got so it. they're they're like. They're, yeah, exactly. So they're like, oh, come work for us. But they don't have a plan of what I would do. They don't, ha- you know, they don't have, you know, I said, yeah, okay, I'll do that. But I just need to know what your br- what your brand is. What's your marketing plan? Because you said you don't want to talk about sugar babies and sugar daddies. So if I work for you, what am I the spokesman of? And they, in six weeks, they haven't given me what I'm the spokesman of. So I was just like, forget it. We're going to go to court. This, this is enough. But I'm going to go to court, but I'm happily going to tell people about this story because I am so over people not understanding what it's like to have people in a company that try to have women or men, whatever, sign an NDA to silence them about bad behavior and Mm -hmm. what that does to people to silence them. I I think it's awful and the the effects. um, And if I wasn't someone who had the platform to talk, I mean, it it really affects people. and, And I don't think people really understand that. 
Yeah, I th- I, it's a very interesting thing because now NDA just rolls off everybody's tongue. But I wonder really what the history is. Like, who was the first attorney or who was the first? Has an NDA been around for 100 years? Has it only been in the last 25? Can you kind of look that up? I'm just really curious. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. But I know now that in L.A. in particular, they, you know, people it's are everything. signing NDAs just to have sex with a celebrity you know right I mean, and they don't even get anything out of it you know it's not like they're making a deal to get paid longer than that they just have sex to so you know, that they the don't night. come on juicy scoop and say i screwed uh leonardo dicaprio and this was the experience right the only thing we know is this was the experience until i signed right. the paper right exactly. and even parties and everything which i kind of i just you know i i it's like I sort of get it in a way in that, like, someone just wants to have, like, a good time where they confiscate your phone. I kind of get that. But... Well, it makes sense for privacy. Like, if you want yeah. your privacy and you don't want it always to be repeated. I mean, I get that, too, because people have sold just my text messages with them. And you don't yeah. want just your whole life out there. I get it. But or when like you're... with an assistant or whatever. You're like, you don't want someone then going and saying, you know, on this day... She yelled at her child or whatever, and you're like, "Oh my god!" And right. It's like taken out of the two, context. You know, Five hundred days of working with me, and one day I like screamed at some, you know, kid or whatever. Exactly, which has never happened. But <laughs> you know, I do kind of think like I do sort of see why people do that with like people in their, especially in their homes. Like, you should be allowed to like have an argument with your husband. You should be allowed to like be annoyed right. without it being on the cover of People magazine. I totally you know? get it. But when people are signing NDAs and it's to cover up bad behavior, right. I think it happens way too often. And I think that women um, do sign things, or men, sorry, I, I guess, but people sign things and they don't realize what they're signing and what freedom that's giving a, themselves away and um, how that psychologically affects them. And I've done it too many times. So, like, explain with your situation because I never really understood, and and then I didn't want to ask you because it was before the Tiger Woods doc, and I didn't want to, like, spill any juice before that was out. But what I don't really understand about your story with the Tiger Woods thing is that, you know, you guys were dating. This was a relationship. And they it started to get out that he that she got mad at him for indiscretion. And so during that time, then you... Um, and that's what I don't get. And because then there was you and then there were the 25 other girls. Mm-hmm. And so I was always like, well, God, you know, Rachel really scored because she she got this. But why? When there were so many, they probably didn't have to do that with you because. But he was I guess he was thinking without you telling these 25 others that he boned at the Waffle House are never <laughs> going to come forward. That's so that's really what I never understood. Point. That's a really good point. And um I can't get into that, but okay. I think you'll hear details about that soon. Okay. But that's a really good point. But can I tell you something yes. that people – I don't know why people don't understand this. Um, you won't hear details about people if an NDA is signed. Do you see what I'm saying? Like when people go to Gloria Allred and you see that they're her client, yeah, that means that nothing has been signed. If you see them in the public, then nothing has been signed. You know, when you see these – when you see her do a press, press conference, conference with right. something, they're not paying her anything because they haven't signed anything. And right. she's not a trial attorney. She's not making any money off of someone. She's just sitting next to you and they're doing a press conference with them because she's got nothing. She hasn't worked out any deal. She's made no money unless she's, you know, getting money from Us Weekly to do some article with them. But unless they've signed an NDA and they're quiet and no one knows about them – then they wouldn't have become famous. Do you follow? So, okay. The, those so people I, that are not famous are so the ones that I, I slept with someone that's famous that did something horribly to me. Okay. Yeah. So I called Gloria Allred mm-hmm. and I'm like, this guy was awful. He was, a, you know, abusive and mean and, you know, I want to sue him. Mm-hmm. So then Gloria Allred says, okay, Heather. And then I sit next to Gloria and I read the statement of like, we went out and it's, this is what happened. If you've done that, you you haven't the, right. You don't have but any then, leverage. But then, but then it's like just like I'm just I'm hypothetical. Is this what we see? Because uh-huh. I'm thinking about. But I give just enough that it's a little teaser. I don't really say all the stuff that. No, happened. I'm telling you already. You have, you've given away all your leverage. If you're on the TV, you've given away all your leverage. 
Okay, so when does she, do you think, as an attorney, tells a scorned woman, I'm glad you came to me. Keep your mouth shut. I've got Heather McDonald here. Um, let's talk. She goes Bef- and talks to their person. Then they go, here, Heather, here's, you know, as $8 soon as million. She, dollars. As soon as they come to your office. So then why do you think sometimes she goes, there is no leverage, so let's do the press conference right now because we're not going to do an NDA because maybe because it's already been out there mm-hmm. to some extent. So the NDA is no longer – the girl already – Right. Shared it on the internet okay. or shared it on something. Is that why? Yeah. You think? Okay. Exactly. And then from that press conference, whatever lawyer is doing that is then getting options from the Daily Mail, the Sun, whoever, a book deal, whatever it is. She, she's getting the girl or the guy out there to then have other options for a story. Okay. To tell the story. Yeah. Because once the person's already out there and the story's out there, you have no leverage. Okay. I mean, why why would she have a, why would anyone have a press conference at that point? The whole right. point is to keep it secret. So, if I was a lawyer, that yes. would be my okay my way to do it. And did you like your appearance in the uh, HBO Tiger Woods doc? Did I like my appearance? Did I like the way that they portrayed me? Yes. Uh, I think those guys are great at what they do. I thought the documentary was really good. Did you so see did the I. I really liked it. Um, I think that it told a great story in general. And I thought in terms of what they did with me, I thought they they were very fair in showing that the the media needed to find a monster um, for the situation and for somebody that everybody put on a pedestal and they wanted to blame somebody and they chose to blame me. And what were your thoughts when you found out that he got in the car accident recently? Um, I didn't really have any thoughts about it. I wasn't surprised. Mm-hmm. That's my answer to that. I thought it was very interesting <laughs> that he never even was charged with a speeding ticket. Because mm-hmm. I, you know, I rolled through a stop sign and I got a speeding ticket. I mean, if you and I went left, I mean, let's, yeah. be, let's be, let's analyze this for a second. If we went but, left on that road, yeah, most people would veer right. Right. Do you know what I mean? You're going down a road. You would veer. You're going off the road. You would go right, not and he, left. And he had gone left. I went to the road, mm. and my because my friend lives over there, mm-hmm. and she's like, "It's not a place where there's a lot of accidents," and you know, and he must have been going really fast. And then I also know that he was uh, getting drinking a lot the night before, and then there there was also quite the party after. Um, and then, you know, that he was irritable and insisted on driving is weird. And I was like, why would you drive? And I'm like, well, he probably thinks that he went to bed and that he's fine, <laughs> right. at, you know. But my sister's a DUI attorney and she's had to, you know, fight and defend people that thought they were sober six hours after partying and they're going to get a coffee and they get, they do something and they get pulled over and they, they're not, you know. So I'm like... I don't know, but I just thought it was interesting that the police then. Yes, I. I mean, all you know, and then I thought it was interesting that that sheriff came out the, that night and yeah. said that same day and said there was no alcohol involved. Mm-hmm. I just, if it were you or I, right, they would say there has to be an investigation. Yeah, right. So I mean, who can? None of us can speculate what was happening in the car, right? Right. So, but all I can say is it was odd that yeah. the sheriff would come out and make such a statement. I did And then I was odd. like, okay, so again, why wouldn't you have gotten a speeding ticket? And they're like, well, you know, he suffered enough or whatever. Or um, because they didn't write the ticket up at that time because it was, oh my God, Tiger Woods, let's get him to the hospital. Like, do people that get in really bad car accidents where they're speeding just don't, they don't get any marks on their DMV? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's crazy, you know, but it's, that's Hollywood and L.A. I don't, I don't actually think that's Hollywood and L.A. He's, you know, he doesn't even live here. So, uh, you know, I think that's him. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are scared of his, um, his agent. Right. So, um, I don't know. We can move on from that topic, but, Um, you know. Well, one thing I did think was really interesting in the Tiger Woods thing is that he, 
<laughs> Wait, I just want to say this because I thought this was... Can I say one thing? I yeah, thought? sure. I thought it was really interesting about him as a child witnessing his dad's indiscretions against mm. his mom. I just thought that was such an interesting thing because I do think oftentimes people sort of mimic a, the adult behaviors of their parents and they don't even really realize it. But they do, they, you know, they look back and they're like, oh, well, my dad always had this lady that came around or whatever. Right. And now they're a person who's also like a cheater. So it's just kind of just sort of interesting. It was very sad. Yeah. The whole thing was, yeah. it was very well done. Yeah. And I hope they win an Emmy. I think so it, it now, should be acknowledged. Okay. So now we don't know what's going to happen with this thing. Um. Right. No, right. we we, and we don't. But I hope, you know, I, what I, all I wanted to say about it is that, yeah. you know, I, the thing is, is I had to, I was glad that I was offered a job, yeah. a legitimate job with so much money. And it's been really hard for me to find a job, for someone to actually give me credibility right. to find a job, and which has been so unfair for me. Yeah. Um, because my name has preceded me for so long. Right. And, even though I'm totally qualified to get a job literally anywhere. You know, I've had so many jobs in my past that have been amazing, working at Bloomberg, working at the, um, you know, the number one grossing hospitality company in the world, having the best job, really being able to do so many things. And then being, having one moment in my life literally affect me to the place where people, you know, don't want to be associated with me still is really toxic for me yeah. you know um and so taking this job even though it was associated with a company that I had to hesitate about um but then I really you know enjoyed the fact that I had a challenge yeah um you know it was really good for me and then sort of to find out that you know I was treated like to see that I was treated like this and then um to see that they might be involved in some sort of scandal that I don't want to be involved in and right. I don't want to be involved in another scandal that has anything to do with anything sex related yeah. or you know any sort of crisis at all cuz I'd like to move on without that kind of um reputation um and that they won't let me out of it in a way that can just be easy and soft um is really um upsetting you know what do you what would be your advice since you did get wrapped up in dating a celebrity and it did not turn out you know great for you like what if you had if there was a young girl in your life you know that was like oh my god you know this married whoever justin bieber who's married to Haley. i'm just saying it's like i'm at this party and he's like let's hang out you know, I mean, I, I mean, how could I miss out this opportunity? I mean, this has been my dream. I had posters of him. Like, what is your advice to someone like that that just is like, well, why? I'm sex positive. Why can't I bone Justin Bieber and live you to mean tell about it till, while he's married? Yeah, mean? like, and tell my friends. I mean, I'm not the one married. Like, what would be? Because I think that's like something that. I and think, he's pursuing, you mean, if yeah, the married guy is pursuing, he's pursuing her? What would be my advice for the girl? Yes, for the girl, at being that you've lived through it. Mm. Gosh. Well, okay, here's the thing. Um, you, Men will say a lot of things to women, right? Yeah. They'll say they're in an open relationship. They'll say right. their, their marriage isn't going well. They'll say all sorts of things. Um, and celebrities have access to all sorts of women, Right. So I can't speak for the circumstance, right, that you're asking me about. I can't say, you know, if the, the man is in one of those relationships. Right. I'm just, first of all, I'm just saying Justin Bieber's a delight. He's a yes. Christian. I'm just using him as an example. Let's not get Justin Bieber in trouble. Don't come after me, Justin or Haley. You're a delightful couple. I'm just saying yeah, they're cute. an example like that where a girl would be really excited and he's hitting on her and who how who does she know? They all could announce tomorrow they're getting divorced, right, right? All I'll say about that is men leave themselves open to all sorts of troubles when they cheat. Right. Because they fall into now a category of opening up their lives to a woman that can ruin their whole life. Right. So I would advise against it. Now, if they want to have that life where they, you know, are 
going after every skirt that runs after them, then so be it. But, you know, all those young girls that are out there in Vegas or whoever and they meet a celebrity and the celebrity says that they're uh, able to, you know, be with whoever they want. Yeah. You know, that's usually not the case. Right. It's usually not true. Um, and if they're with you, they're with other people. Right. And they're not going to leave their wife for you. And it's not, you know, you're no different than anyone else. I hate to say that. But right. um, that's usually the case. Those men are not going to change their life for you, you yeah. know. Um, but there's always the exception. Um, and, you know, they're usually not going to go for someone who acts like a fan. Is, right. Is my my advice about that. They usually go for someone who's... A, a wingman or someone they find cool for, yeah. for different reasons anyway. Um, so. But, you know, just like you said, they're going to open their life and that girl could ruin their life. Yeah. And if they perceive you as ruining their life, you could end up like Marilyn Monroe. You know what I mean? Like that's the, <laughs> that's the other thing. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's the same reason of like why a guy shouldn't be sleeping with a married woman. Oh, yeah. Her husband may freak out and literally kill you. Yes, like, that is true. You know, you think, oh, who cares? She's married. She's a cougar. I'm 30. She's 45. And she's rich. And I go up to Calabasas and bone her all the time. And what's the problem? Yep. You know, well, the problem is, you know, you don't know who, what you're dealing You don't know how someone's going to react. Of course. So it's like, I just think too many. Or Mary Buttafuoco or whatever. Remember Right. Her? Yeah. Loved that story. What crazy people. With, um, yeah, the. What was the dot? What was the girl? Amy Fisher. Yes, Amy Fisher, and she shot the woman in the head. And that was all different stories too. That was, you know, I remember that was so great because there were three TV movies. Mm -hmm. One was because it was so interesting. Yeah, one was Amy Fisher's point of view. Mm -hmm. One was Joey and Mary Joe's point of view, yep. which was, you know, oh my God, this nothing happened. She was obsessed with him because he uh -huh. fixed her fender bender, and then she right. shot me. Right. Nothing happened. And then, of course, the Amy Fisher was, oh, my God, he hit on me. And then he, you know, even made me a prostitute mm -hmm. and told me to, to kill his wife. Right. Exactly. And then the third one was actually what happened. Right. Exactly. You know, and so I was like, oh, my God, this was amazing. So, yeah, they all yeah. have their own versions. I went to her book signing. No. Yes. I went to what? I went, it was like Why? so random. No, not Amy Fisher, Mary Jo. But oh. it, was, it was so random. It was like years ago. And I'm at dinner with like these girls, like just other moms and people. Wait, didn't I she know. get shot in the face? Yeah. Did she have a scar? No, she she got um she finally went on some show and got really good plastic surgery after. But oh. still, it's not right. I mean, it's really sad. I mean, when she talks about how like the pain and the headache and like everything she had, she was a 38 year old, like fit young yeah. mom. And did, like, I mean, when I think about stuff like that, I'm like, oh my God, you know, or like the guy that got shot walking Lady Gaga's dogs. Like, oh, people yeah. just forget about that. I'm like, I like scrape my toe and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can wear pumps tonight. Like, yeah. imagine being like shot, like rehabilitated, no. and like even just being in a hospital. It's not a hotel room. Like, right. you just everything about it is so. No, she, so I'm at this dinner and they're like, you know, Mary Jo, somebody knew her, is doing a book signing at like this Encino Barnes and Noble. And so like I went and I met her and I read the book and I'm like, it was amazing. Was it? Yeah. I mean, it was just, her story was just exactly that, that she, you know, um, he was like a, a, not a great husband to begin with right. and she'd forgive him and everything, but. That, no, she totally – and the, the juiciest thing about it was there was a, a bullet that, like, went through their house, like, a month prior. And they're like, what was – and they were like, it, what – like, something, like, broke their thing. And they're like, what was that? They're like, someone playing with BB guns. And – But was that her? Was that – I So they think now, looking oh. back, that's how actually premeditated it was. Hmm. And because, oh, the, what happened is the um, – I've got to show this. So what happened was – the guy that was with her that did that shot through the house a month prior, his um, what do you call it? The time had passed. He could tell. He could talk. Oh, oh, right. He okay. was not going to get in trouble no matter what. Got it. And so then she and her daughter were like, "Oh my God, we totally remember that. That was like the day before Thanksgiving, and we didn't, you know. And once I was shot, we never like told the police. You know, we never were like, "Hey, police, remember a month ago? We just because they found her." 
so quickly that it was didn't matter that it was a month ago. But the month ago thing would have made it a bigger case of premeditation and right. planning. And because she always said, "Oh, I had the gun just to scare," her, and then it accidentally went off. Right. Yeah. So, see, ladies, I think it's a bad idea yeah. <laughs> to get involved because it's you know. A lot. And plus, you know, I don't think that at the end of the day, I mean, it seems so exciting to be with, you know, a celebrity and yes. a man. But at the end of the day, they're all men. And, you know, they they end up, no offense, but they're not yeah. all like you. Yeah. Um, you know, they all, what was the woman who cut off her husband's penis? Le- uh, Bobbitt. Yes. L- Lorena. Lorena? Yeah. Yes. They all come around the same time, those yeah. stories. Those yeah. were great stories. They were all like hard copy 90s yeah, times. Yeah, I love yeah. those. The like... 90s, those love stories yeah. of the 90s. Well, oh, so God. what are you up to now? Like, besides this, what's going on? Have you been watching Real Houses of New York? I Well, it's so bad. This I season. know. Um, I have been. Do you um, ever imagine if you were there? Because I was really <laughs> putting it out there for you. Well, it looks like they need a new cast, right? Yeah. Um, I have God, been it watching been it. So, I think it would have been good if they would have gone more the route of like women like you oh, and thanks. your age and, you know, stuff like that. Because this is just... But a part of it, too, is to give love to Bravo. It's just like the COVID thing is hard. I guess so. You don't have much going on. None you, don't, of them... you don't have as much going on in your life because of COVID. You don't have boyfriends because you couldn't meet anybody during COVID. Then I... you have to go do a, all these trips just I guess... to have them do but stuff. But it seems like they don't really know each other. Right. Maybe? That's true, too. They don't know. No. they Only the three girls really know each other well. But it also Luana, just seems yeah. like they – the difference in the shows seems like all they do is – argue yeah and it actually i noticed that it like stresses me out like yes. the fighting really gives me anxiety that, that last fight that they had i was like i literally couldn't even like uh, follow it yeah and normally i'd be so like and then i was just like oh, and I the can't. drinking the the sloppy drinking yeah is a little bit much yeah. to watch it's sort of well now i just feel like they're just like oh my god you know and i've ta- I've interviewed enough of the housewives to do that on on reality shows that sometimes they literally are just so tired that they're like, if we can just get one fucking fight, we can call it a night. Oh. You know, like if we can just make something happen, whether it's they say it to each other or just in their own brain or a producer's like, well, it's boring. It I don't know. We're going to have to go back to the hotel and you guys are going to have to start to play charades if you don't make some shit oh, happen. Gosh. And just like any other job, you're like, can I leave the target? Like you want to like be clocked off. Oh, gosh. So then I think that's then all of a sudden they're like, you're a clown. You're a slut. I'm not a clown. Don't touch the boy. And let him. But I like Sonia, and I actually think she's probably the most real on there. But, like, you know, and then it gets crazy. Do you think they really are going to let go of Ramona? No. She's she's fun. I mean. I don't think they would, unless they, like, start all over, which I don't think they'll do. I don't know why. I mean, I kind of just feel like bring back the OGs and maybe start, like, a secondary one and put on Peacock and make it, like, Real Housewives of New York, like, younger Mm -hmm. and have people that are, like, you know, like, more, like, late 30s to mid 40s and like you know have it and so that you can actually follow their life but it's just so hard to find people with real money or worse they're nobody wants to like but jeopardize their marriage I feel like for this that, dumb show that group you know? is really odd to me because well first of all none of them are married right and um well they started out as being married. yeah i guess so <laughs> um but in new york it's really hard to meet a man by the yeah, way so yeah. so that's an odd dynamic um but i don't even know if bringing back the old the old cast even makes sense i feel like it has to have some new blood yeah. or something but you know it's funny i've become really good friends with aviva i think yeah. aviva's great and in yeah. reality she's Terrific and a lot of fun, you yes. know. And some of the other cast members that I know are really fun in real life. So I don't yeah. know why, you know, the ones on camera are not. But I love um, the House well, of Beverly Aviva Hills. Was, you know, she had the leg. Yeah, and that was the greatest moment. And when she I threw in, the leg. Uh, yeah, when she threw yeah. the leg, and I interviewed her, and I think I can't remember, but I feel pretty much like she admitted that obviously that was planned. But how couldn't you plan it? You're going to a party. And you're like, you know that they're calling you fake. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to say the only thing that's fake about me is (laughs) this leg. Right. But it was like such a great moment. And and instead they were like, 
yeah, we don't want you back. You know, like, and I was like, it's oh, so my God. It's who they yeah. don't have back. But Aviva and I are very funny because obviously we share Harry in common. So Aviva. Oh, because so Aviva's ex-husband you also dated. Yes. And so we talk to each I other last all the I time. I to you. Were you going on a date with Aviva or Ramona's mer- husband? Both. This? I've dated them both. Okay, so tell me about both of them. Oh, so, well, let, let me just finish my story. Yeah. So Aviva and I yeah. talk all the time. We're, yeah. we're good friends. But Aviva and I were talking over the summer or whatever because we were both annoyed with Harry. So we would go back and forth fighting about him, being like, what did he tell you about this? And then she would call me and be like, oh, he's such a dick. You know, what did he say about this? And so we would both... And that's when you were romantic with him. You were dating him and you were like talking no, to I him. No, for... we were actually just both of us friends, but we were, you know, he oh. was just being irritating and I was... Whatever. What is we his deal? Saying, Why? He, what's so great about oh, him? Harry. God, how do you explain Harry? He's he's a wonderful guy. He really well, what, is. What makes him wonderful? Uh, he's charismatic and sweet. Um, I, you know, whatever. He he's he's a nice guy. Okay. Um, but you, you know, I will never end up with him because he's not reliable. Is really how to yeah. end that. He's he's a a child. He's well, he child. didn't. He almost like asked Sonia to marry him. Then he started dating. He asked everybody Ramona. to marry them all the time. He calls me probably once a week and asks if I'll still date him or marry him. And then he forgets to show up to our date. I swear to God. I mean, if I look at my phone, there's probably a mess. So he's like, me. marry me, and you're like, okay, I won't marry you, but I'll go to dinner with you Friday night. And he's like, okay, I'm going to pick you up, yes. and, I'm gonna, and then we're going to go to yes. the whatever place. Mm-hmm. And you're all cute. No, and- I don't even get cute anymore <laughs> because I know he's not going to show up. But do you confirm like at four? No, I don't even bother. It's to too annoying. Night. It's too annoying. I don't even do it anymore. Have you he's ever so annoying. not confirmed not gotten cute, and he did show up at your door at No, seven. but I'll tell you what I did do. What? I bet him $1,000 that he wasn't going to show up for dinner. And he said, oh, yes, I'm going to go. And we were meeting at the Carlisle. And so I, my assistant, who was an ex-model, was yeah. sleeping on my couch at the time. And so it was, it was at 7 o'clock at the Carlisle, and it was about, I don't know, 6 o'clock. And I said, Megan, I really don't want to go. I have this date. And she's like, with who? I said, Harry Dubin. She goes, oh, my God, I love Harry Dubin. I want to go on the date. So I said, well, you can go. She's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't want to lose $1,000. So, yeah, I, I bet him 1000 You can go. She's like, oh, my God, okay, great. So she pulls clothes out of my closet. She takes my handbag. She does her hair. She literally looks like a Victoria's Secret model. So at 7 o'clock, she walks out the door. I lived right across the street from the Carlisle. So she goes. She meets him. At 9 o'clock, I get a phone call. It's dead silent in the background. Hey, Rach, what are you doing? I'm like, where are you guys? They were back at his apartment. Oh, so he did show up. He showed up. And not only did he show up, he had sex with her. Yeah. My date. My date. Now do you feel like My date, my assistant. And he said, well, what did you want me to do? You sent... You sent what? a girl, and she was. And down. we laugh about it now, but it's not even funny. Is Were that you funny? You sat at your assistant. No, I mean, I I was disappointed. I yelled at both of them. But what was I going to say? I mean, both of them are such assholes. But what was I going to say? I really think that you need to have lunch with Sonia because that is, that's what she has said about. And basically, that's what happened with uh, Luann's um, Tom. And it also happened with Harry Dubin and, and I know Ramona. Tom. Uh, yeah, and Tom's a Have jerk you dated off Tom also. As well. No, but Tom's actually very cute. But Tom is just as much of an idiot. And Mario, I met yes. on Bumble. Right. Did I tell you that? Yes. And so, did you ever go out with him? Twice. Yeah. And what was the date? Tell me. Actually, I stood him up for the second date. But the, the first, first date, yeah. I went on, and he's and you very go? cute. We went to, I think it was called like Sojourn or something in yeah. Manhattan, some, I don't know, some no-name place. Yeah. We went and we met at the bar. Yeah. And we had a really nice time. We had all this chemistry. Yeah. And he like lifted me up on the hood of my Range Rover and like made out with me at the end. It was very romantic. You have a car in New York City no, that you're driving at, to? Oh. No. Yeah. At the time I did. Oh, yeah. Because nice. I had my store in, um, okay. in Scarsdale. So he kind of like lifted me up. It was very romantic. Okay, yeah. and then what in happened? In the sunset. So then what happened? Why would you blow off the second date then? Well, he, he lives in Florida, so he okay. wasn't around all the time. Right. And we kept in touch. So it was pre-COVID. Yes, it was okay. pre-COVID. And then, we t- and then oh, wait, we went on a second date. I'm sorry. Then um, over what this- What was the second date? But over this Christmas, 
he came to Florida. I was living in Palm yeah. Beach over the winter. And he came to my house, and I made him dinner. And my daughter was there, and she met him and hung out. A, a bunch of people were there for dinner. And she went to sleep, and this is horrible. And then when he went to kiss me goodnight, he was leaving and getting into his car. And he goes, and he goes to kiss me goodnight, and my daughter had woken up, and she had come out of the house. And he just goes to give me an innocent kiss, and she screamed at the top of her lungs, bloody murder. You know how kids do when they, like, yeah. see you kissing? Just screamed and as he was kissing me. Just to, and what did she just say? No, don't nothing. do it. She was just like, ah, because <laughs> she saw us kissing. So that was the end of our date. And then you, okay. And then he got in the car, and I've never spoken to him since. <laughs> it was horrible. So you've only made out with him. Yeah, that was it. And, and but then, he was I would have dated him. By the way, he's really old. And he's <laughs> sorry. He's really old, but he's better looking than most guys you've ever no, seen. No, he's really good looking. And great Fit. body. Yeah. But well, just like Ramona, he, both of them are look amazing, amazing for their age. But he's um all he does is play golf, tennis, get gets massages, um, and hangs out. He's very he's like retired, you know, whatever. I would totally date him, but he I don't live that lifestyle, really. Do you think he has a lot of money? I don't really. I mean. Well, what about the fact that they were, like, all hanging out during COVID? They were making food together and hanging out, him and Ramona and the daughter, Avery. Yeah, I don't really. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's okay. I don't really understand. I read Ramona's book. Oh, how was that? It was hilarious. Like, the way, it's just the way she talks. Like, just like, what? I can't believe she said that. But then... Um, but then she does talk about how she found out he was having the affair, and then she took him back, and then she found out he was having the affair again, and then she finally was like, oh. I'm out. Yeah. But for the first part, you know, for the majority of their marriage, it was like this great marriage, and they were really sexual together, and like, and everybody kind of attests to that that was around them. So no, they were like very, into chem- each like other. very into each other, like for many, many years, and, um, but there was that one episode of Real Housewives of New York where they're like in Morocco and they go to like a psychic or something. And Ramona's there and the psychic is like, oh, your husband's with another woman. <laughs> and Jill's there and it's like, <laughs> like dying, you know. And that. then, and she's like, and they're like, she's a young blonde. She's like, that's my daughter, Avery. You're seeing my daughter, Avery. That's not, okay, my husband, we're like really hot for each other. Like, I don't think that ever happened to Mario. And then like a couple of years later, like, He was with a young blonde, you know? And it was like, oh, my God. I think that's probably the only psychic that has ever been correct. They've got to go back to that psychic. I know. That would make the show good. What's wrong with them? Um, No, but Mario – oh, so here's my story about Ramona. Yeah. And Harry, actually. Yeah. Over this Christmas or whenever it was, over the winter, I was in Palm Beach with my daughter. And Harry, who kept calling me and asking me to date him, said, I'm at the beach. Come. And I used to go every lunch and see Harry at the beach with my daughter. He's very close to my daughter. So I went to the beach with with my daughter. And I go. And there's Ramona sitting with Harry. Yeah. And a bunch of people. So I sit down. And Harry moves his chair. And so he's on the left of me. Ramona's on the right of me. And now is Ramona being flirty with Harry? Well, yeah. I'll get to it. So... And Wyatt, my daughter, is sitting on the other side of Harry. So we're talking, and this is the first time I've really met her. Yeah. And Ramona definitely knows about me through Harry. Yeah. So I'm talking to her a little bit, and she's like, oh, what's your name again? You know, and it's this awkward, you know, oh, okay, whatever. We're going to do it this way. So so we talk a little, and we're hanging out, and we're being friendly. And Harry, who had just asked me out again and asked if we're going to marry each other again, you know, (laughs) just – a couple hours before, um, is talking to me. And Ramona, uh, and Harry had just had COVID. So I said, how are you feeling? And Ramona says, oh, why were you sick? I said, he had COVID just, you know, 14 days ago. She goes, Harry, we were just swapping spit two days ago. What do you mean? And I look at Harry. I'm like, you're disgusting. He's like, no, we weren't swapping spit. This is the epitome of Harry because he lies about everything. What are you talking about, Ramona? She's like, Harry... We were just, like, doing the dirty. She's saying this in front of my kid. I'm like, Harry, but you can't get mad at him. So clearly I knew they were, like, having sex two days before. And my daughter's like, oh, my God, Mom. Meanwhile, (laughs) Harry didn't have a car. He hadn't rented a car, so he asked me to drive Ramona back to her apartment. So it's me, my daughter, and Ramona's in the back seat of my car 
and I'm driving her to wherever she was staying. I mean, the whole thing was so awkward. Oh, my God. So that's God. my story with Ramona. I found out that she was sleeping with Harry or whatever, fooling around with Harry. And my daughter was listening to this whole thing, and she's like, oh, God, Mom, Harry Dubin, you know. <laughs> that's what she says all the time. Oh, Harry Dubin. How old Dubin, is she? Nine. She just thinks he's such a joke. But she loves him, but she thinks that he's so. So is there anyone you're dating now? No. Do you have anyone to set me up with? No. <laughs> I don't know anybody. Okay, fine. Um, Do we know anybody? I'll think about it. I don't think so. Well, That's someone okay, good. Fine. That's someone good enough. Um, no, I really wish that I could find somebody good, but, you know, it's very hard to find somebody. And you're back in New York. You're just here for a little. I'm back in New York, yes. Um, I'm working on actually doing um, a podcast. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, yeah, with a guy named Tim Story, who's a great um, life coach to um, celebrities and um, people and he and I are working on a, a great podcast for cool. people that are sort of better known as um, other other things and to tell the true story of the people behind the things that they're better known as. So yeah, that's what we're working on. Well, good for you. So well, fun. thank you for coming back. I really hope that this works out in your favor. Thank you. I'm curious to know what's going to unfold. Me too. <laughs> in the next few weeks. But um, you'll have to. I'll have to call you yeah. afterwards, and we'll do a Zoom about that. Yes, we will. We awesome. Will. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so, you guys, you know what to do. You go to heathermcdonald.net and you join Patreon. Juicy, juicy scoop. Juicy episode tomorrow, Friday, and you get all the episodes once you join from the moment I started, which is I think over three years ago. So, join now. Thanks. <laughs>